Before we go into our changed and enhanced vision prayer, I'd like to give you a couple of updates. Um, it's been almost a year at the end of February that Reverend Cindy retired. And the Board of Trustees created this beautiful packet that they sent to Unity Worldwide Ministries to attract a new minister. And we were told emphatically by several people, it's going to take years. Don't get disappointed. Don't lose faith, but it could take three, four, five, or more years for you to attract somebody because there are so many ministries looking right now. Well, it's been just a year, and we now have our new spiritual leader. Amen. <laughs> so the board has made an offer, and we have a short video. If you cue the video, that will tell you what's going on. Good morning, good morning. This is my husband, Rick, and I'm Reverend Sharon Renee, and we were there a couple of weeks ago doing a wonderful tryout. We had a wonderful time with you guys, and you knew that I had some other tryouts to go through. I have done those, and now it was the time to make the choice. And I am just going to tell you, it was not a hard decision, was it, Rick? It was, it was very easy because nobody got the candle to you. So I have accepted that I am coming to be your spiritual leader. It's loving, it's warm, it's compassionate, it's kind, it's supportive, it's all of the things that I desire in a community, and I'm hoping I've reached you all the things that you desire in a spiritual leader. So I have a few personal things to take care of, and as soon as I get those down, I will have a date so that we know when I am starting, but it will be within the next couple of months, and we're just really, really excited. I'm in a public place, so I can't jump in down and go, woo-hoo! <laughs> All right, so I hope you guys have a really great week, and I hope you're as thrilled about us coming as we are to be there. So... You know, just enjoy your day and um, just keep doing what you do and shine a light. And I am just so excited to be there. And Rick is excited too. I am. Excited. He is excited too. All right, we love you. So, anybody watching online, you probably weren't able to see the video. I hope you were able to hear Reverend Sharon accept our offer to become our new spiritual leader. So we have modified our vision prayer because this vision prayer that we've been saying for over 10 months now has brought her to us. So we're modifying the vision prayer to accept what's coming to us. So I'm going to say it and then I'm going to ask you to say it with me. Together, we are grateful that the universe is safely guiding unity of Dayton into the future. We release all resistance to change, letting go of what was and gratefully accepting the new. The harmonizing power of love has shown us the way to navigate transition, and we welcome Reverend Sharon with open hearts. We are excited and ready to step into the future. Thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. Wow. Amen. Let's say this together. Together, we are grateful that the universe is safely guiding unity of Dayton into the future. We release all resistance to change, letting go of what was, and gratefully embracing the new. The harmonizing power of love has shown us the way to navigate transition, and we welcome Reverend Sharon with open hearts. 
We are excited and ready to step into the future. Thank you, God, and so it is. Now let's settle down into our seats and move our consciousness and our focus to our heart and space as we have an opening prayer. The love of God is a grand love. It is all embracing and freely given. Let's fill our minds with the understanding that God's love is always available to us. God, I thank you that you are love itself, and you have created me out of love to express your love in the world. Your love fills me, and its healing power touches every area of my body temple, restoring and revitalizing it. In this moment, I open my mind to you so that my consciousness may become saturated with the beauty of your love that forgives all, harmonizes all, and blesses all to experience oneness with you. I am one with God. I am one with love. I am love. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Now let's stand and sing. Um, how could anyone, this is one of those unity songs that's meant to be sung to each other. Oh, step out of your comfort zone just a little. How could anyone sing the song of and encourages all people to live fully and reach their unique potential. I feel a kinship with those who hold a similar vision and work to realize it. My past experiences and present perspective show me what is mine to do and how I can contribute to realizing my vision. I trust I will be guided and inspired to find avenues of service for the things I do best and most enjoy doing will be most helpful. I bless people I may never meet. I offer my time, talents, and effort to become my vision of a new way of living. With clarity of purpose, I take my place among the growing network of caring, visionary souls. And from Ephesians 4, verses 11 and 12, the gifts he gave me were to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. The daily word is aspire. Now we're going to stand and sing one more time. This time, I see the Spirit.
She graduated from Wright State University in 1992 and is a home care nurse. After graduation, Olivia decided to work and raise her four children to give them a better future. She came to Unity in 2004 with a friend. She especially loves the Unity 12 Towers and she tries to apply them to all areas of her life. She is also a truth student of Eric Tolley because he deals with the human mind and behavior dynamics. Recently, she has been listening to Dr. Wayne, Dr. Wayne Dyer's, I always transpose to the WD, Dr. Wayne Dyer's interpretation of the Tai Chi Chin titled, Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life, Living with the Wisdom of the Tao. So after um, some brief, beautiful music, then Olivia will take over the stage. <clears throat> In the silence there is peace, in the silence there is unspoken joy, in the silence there's Into the universe. 
and send peace throughout the universe. Let there be light. We are in the space and we are breathing. Lord, make us instrument of your peace. In the world that we are in, make us instrument of thy peace in our homes. Make us instrument in our peace, in our workplaces. Make us instrument of thy peace in our politics. Make us instrument of thy peace in Ukraine. Make that instrument of peace come to each one of them and breathe life through them. Comfort them and be there for them. We send abundance of love to Russia. We send abundance of peace to Russia. We send the power of the universe that give us life to each one of them. For we are all one in that spirit. We send comfort to Turkey. Many lives that have been lost, they all transfigured into angels. No one dies. Let our mind travel around the globe. Let us hold the globe in our hands every day and speak peace to it. For we all do need peace. So we must hold peace in our hearts towards the globe, in our minds towards the globe. Let us send it to our children in schools in grocery stores, in churches, those that are home, that are here, or those that are here, let that peace around them. Breathe in peace, and bring out peace to the next person and to the whole world. I invoke all your 12 powers within you to wake up. I invoke in you the power of understanding to understand what is going on in the world you know, and be awakened. The power of will for the power is within you to accept or make a change. The power of faith in the knowing that we are the source of love and peace in this world. We are the caretakers of the world. The power of imagination. The power of love. The power of strength. And the power of forgiveness. Bring that into your daily life. Let the words that come out of your mouth every day speak of the love, the peace, the joy, the forgiveness that is within you. The power and the strength and the voice of Dr. Martin Luther King. 
the Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta to be with us this morning. For the message that is for us is for the whole world. The message of love and kindness and compassion in the knowing that even though we might be different in the outside or on the outside, we are all the same. And the divine love that created all the universe, the earth, the stars, the space, the ocean, the rivers, the plants and animals created us all in love and in understanding. Oh, baby. 
Good morning, Unity of Dayton. And I thank you for sending me up here today. In the month of November, I was walking towards my dressing mirror. My kids have been asking me, Mom, what are you going to do when you retire? And uh, I said, I'm moving there towards the mirror by myself. And all of a sudden, that question that the kids have been asking me, I asked myself, what are you going to do when you retire? And I said, maybe I'll preach or maybe I'll just go out and form a prayer center or do something. I came to church that morning and I sat in the corner. Auntie Vivian said to me, sister, I am the only usher today, so uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be doing I said, you don't have to worry, I'll help you. So I sat down there and after church, I saw two people walking towards me and they stuck something on my on my hand and they said uh, we want you to talk about Martin Luther King. The, I think the third, the third or fourth Sunday of January. But that day, it snowed so much that we didn't have church. So I said, well, I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to start out there. <laughs> then, come, <laughs> then come February. Then I, oh, OK. Olivia, it's Black History Month. It's right in order. So yeah, then right. get ready because and go deliver the message. So I'm here to talk to you about a young man that was born. I think it was a cosmic uh, birth that some people are born with the lifeline to come to humans to lead us, wake us up, or teach us a lesson and guide us towards our Christhood. I took a look at the month of February and February the 1st was National Freedom Day it also the first day of the Black History Month. Then we move on to the second, it's a Groundhog Day. And it told that we have six more weeks of winter. Then we came to fifth. Friday the fifth is full moon day, ladies. And then we move on to February the 13th, which is a quarter moon. And then we came to February the 14th, Valentine's Day, the day of love that we all express to each other. And then the next day, the 15th flag day. And then today we are here and we have been told we have a minister. So today is a big day for us. And that will also remind me the first day you stood up there trying to preach. <laughs> And so we have the President Day tomorrow, and then we have a touch of Easter, Ash Wednesday. So the month of Friday, the month of February, has been very, very, very full of energy for us. When I look at the list of the 12 powers, the month of February is the disciple Matthew. And, and also the power is the will power and the color is silver. So I welcome all of you this morning. We have reviewed the month of February and we are moving on to the person that we are supposed to talk about. In the world that we are living in, we have three processes taking place among us. Our relationship to God that we all seek through every religion. Our relationship to us, to each other. 
whether it's continent, countries, friendship, relationships, husband and wife, children and parents, that relationship that we have towards each other, that is the relationship Martin Luther King came to speak about. And then we have relationship towards all the other things around us. The space we are in, plants and animals that give us food, the waterways, the ocean, the rivers, we are given the power to take care of those because they are there for our good. They are there for our life, for us living here on this planet Earth. So that is the three processes. You and God, me and you, and everything around us. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and God spoke in the form of a man. And through all the processes, we are here. When Adam and Eve, we say, science say there's a cell that broke up. Some people say there were Adam and Eve. Either way, there's one, and something came out of it, and we all came. So we are here on this earth for a reason, to be to love and to be loved. On the planet that we live on, we have people that live on the temperate zone, people that live close to the sun, and then we have people that also live in the really, really ice places on the planet earth. The people that live in the middle, that live close to the sun, their skin is dark. The people that live far out, their skin begin to shade up to lighter colors. Some years ago on this planet Earth, as the continents broke up and water came between them, some Europeans that are looking for trading posts found themselves in the coast of Africa. There in Africa, they made friends with the kings they infiltrated with the culture. Beginning, they were free with the kings. They brought in salt, sugar, and rum. And the kings really loved it. And they wanted their people to come and learn how to make those. So they sent with the, the Europeans that came, the best of the people in, in their kingdom to come to school to learn how to do this. The, the European took the, the first people, they took the second people, but the third and fourth people, they realized that the people that they brought were very, very strong. They work in the farms, productivity is good, they're making good money. So it, when they came in the multiple trips, it turned out to be raiding or something they call the slave trip. So some people were taken out of their country and brought into this, onto this land. Not this land only, but the, we're talking about Martin Luther King, so we will limit ourselves to this land. Before we, we come to Martin Luther King, we have to talk about his parents. He had the mom and the dad were sharecroppers that work on the farm. One day, the young Michael King, the father, walked out of the farm and found himself in Atlanta, city of Atlanta. He started to attend school. And after he finished his school in Atlanta, he became a minister. He dated the, uh, he dated the minister's daughter. <laughs> she had James Albert and the wife, Delia King. In Atlanta, he met the William family. The William family were the ministers of the 
Martin Luther King's church that he ministered. The father's name was Adam Daniel Williams King. The minister's wife of Jenny Celeste Park. After a little while, they moved into the house, the second floor of the Williams home. When the King Senior was a minister, he had the charisma within himself to multiply the attendance on each Sunday. So sometimes when they have international trips to go or conferences to go, he will be the one that is sent to those conferences because of the way he delivered the message. So one of the conferences that he went to was one that was in Berlin. When he got to that conference, it was He went to the conference in Berlin in 1934. And in that conference, it was for the Congress of the Baptist World Alliance. And in that place, he visited, he visited the site of the tomb of a man called the Martin Luther. It's because of Martin Luther that anybody has access to the Bible that we read now. In those days, the Bible only for the, the Pope the bishop and the clergy. So whatever is preached to you is what you believe. There was nobody has access to the Bible. In this place, the Congress had made a decision about how the people in, in, the, in, in Berlin or in Germany were being treated. There was a lot of oppression in that place There was, there was a maltreatment towards the Jews. People were being loaded up in trains and sent into concentration camps. During that time, this brought a lot of sadness to the people that were at the conference. And they made a vow that the conquerors deplore and condemn all the treatment of the people around the world and that they demand that discrimination from oppression was unfair to everyone towards the Jews or to anybody who has been condemned to die because of their color of their skin. The father was very interested in the civil rights movement. He also liked to use the ideas of Gandhi from India, whom we heard about last week. When he came back home from the trip this time, he decided to change his name. So the Michael King now becomes Michael Luther King. So at the age of five, he decided to change his son's name also. So at the age of five, he changes the Mikey, Michael King Jr. to Michael Luther King Jr. The name change that we have, the white stone ceremony that we have, when you change your name, there's a character that changes with you. So Michael King was born January 15, 1928. We are going to follow. I am more interested in what happened in his house or in his childhood that brought him to that level of Christhood that his boy bellowed through the horizon to the house of human beings throughout the whole world. So at the age of five, he has a change of name. At the age of six, he starts school 
Before he starts school, he had a friend that he played with. They played hide and seek all the time. This time he has started school, he come back from school, he want to go play with his friend, and his, his friend told him that he's not allowed to come to, the, to their house to play anymore because of the color of his skin. Young Michael comes to mom and says to mom, mom, my friend that I've been playing along all the time, now I started elementary school, young elementary school, and now I cannot play with him anymore. She said I shouldn't come. Can you imagine explaining to a six-year-old why he cannot go play with his friend? I'm sure mom and dad did the best they can to consult him. He turned into music. He started singing in the church with his mom. And one of the music I understand that he liked the most is called, Lord, make me more and more so I'll be like you. He joined the choir and they had to put up a play in Atlanta premiere film, Gone with the Wind. And he, wrote, he enrolled in the Atlanta University Library, Talent Library School, where he learned how to play violin and the piano. He took classes and he learned a lot of songs. So at church, he and the mom could sing and also help multiply the attendance of the church. At the age of 13, he became a young assistant of a, new, of a newspaper delivery station in Atlanta. God is preparing him. 13 years old, he is assistant manager at the newspaper delivery system in Atlanta. Lord, make me more and more so I may serve you. He skipped the ninth grade and I was accepted to the high school in Atlanta, Booker T. Washington High School. In the high school, his friends were known, were known about him for his oritone, baritone voice. And in that voice, that is the drag that when he speaks, you could hear that voice within him. <clears throat> he liked to dress very cool. He liked to wear tweedy suits. He liked alligator shoes. And he was the best jitterbug dancer in town. <laughs> and the girls like him very much. At, the, at 13 years old, on 13th of April, 1944, he gave his first speech that was sponsored by Improved Benefits Protective Order of Elk of the World in Dublin, Georgia. It is in that speech that he spoke about the two Americas, the rich America and the poor America, the oppressed America and the free America. So he spoke about what was going on, the segregation, the oppression that was going on in that time and addressed that very well. There was everything for black people and there was everything for white people. Everything was divided. The people were divided. Here comes this young man. He's traveling through life and coming up. In this speech, he did the speech contest. He won the speech contest. So can you imagine such a young man at that age winning that big contest that was given across the whole United States. On his way home, 
he sat down in the bus. And the bus driver, he went with his teacher. The bus driver told him, get up, you son of the bee. You are not allowed to sit down. Can you imagine where you have gone to deliver a speech? A young man and somebody tells you something like that. At that time, he said he wasn't going to stand up. But his teacher convinced him to stand up so they don't get into trouble. And he did. Lord, make me more and more so I may serve you. At the age of 15, there was a Second World War, and most of the students have been enlisted. So there was a lot of vacancies in the colleges. So there was a, a test or exam that if you are given the exam and you pass, whatever you are in a high school, you can just go to college. And he did pass and he ended up going there. So he went to Morehouse College. And then he went in with some friends that made life a little bit better for him. I asked my son to bring me information from Martin Luther King, and he gave me about 70 pages from Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> So in that summer, Morehouse, he went in with his friends. And in that school, they had the opportunity to work on a tobacco farm to pay their school fees. So some of the students were from 7 to 5 p.m. under the scorching sun to make a living. So that is what he did. So he experienced everything from childhood, the segregation, the oppression, and watching his father into the civil rights movement, all the sitting in into the lunch, uh, lunch places, going into different areas where the poor people are to talk. Most of the black people on Sunday was their relief day because they can come to church and sing and worship and relieve their spirit of that misery, continuous misery that stayed upon them. On the farm, they were given $4 a day for the work that they performed. He played freshman football And he and his friends, the southern part of the United States was where most of the problem is. The northern part, there was much, a little bit of a freedom. So he, he wrote to his father and told his father how free he was <coughs> in the Pennsylvania area where on Sundays they can go to any church and sit down. On Sundays, they go to town, bought ice cream, sat down to eat, and they were free. There was no division between the black or the poor or the marginalized. They can go everywhere. So he wrote his dad, I've never asked dad, this place is different from where you are. I go to church, I sit in among the congregation, there's no problem. We are not being beaten, we are not being run out of places. We could go anywhere we want. So God was preparing him more and more. He being back home, 
the rigid segregation, oppression, and here there's a relief. So when God is preparing you for a task, he gives you all the experiences so that you can work with both sides. In the civil rights movement, they formed the organization. There were quite a bit of, a lot of, it's very difficult for me to wear this all the time. White people among them. I don't think without those people, the movement could have gone on. So they have rich white people, clergy, monks, and everybody coming in together to back them up. It was said somewhere that any time that he was arrested, Billy Graham was the one that paid the fine. Yes. So there were a lot of people in the society that, you know, showed their faces, but they showed their deed and their moral support. Whilst he was in the seminary school in Upland, Pennsylvania, he became a minister to some of the to the Chester Baptist Church. And most of the Baptist Church, the ministers were friends. So most of them were friends with his father. So everywhere he went, he had the back support. So the condition that he was in was not, you cannot even compare to the poor people that were sharecroppers work, working in farms that were limited in all that they could do. So he got married after the ministry school. It was said that he began his doctoral school in the University of Boston. He still took some classes from Harvard University. And then he graduated with the PhD in 1955. From there, after he got married to Corrida Scott, he was all, she was also in a different ministerial school but he requested her to stay back and take care of the children so that he will be the one going forward and she will be taking care of the children at home he stayed in montgomery alabama for five years and then he returned back to Atlanta. The circle is complete. So if you look at the life that he had, you look at the parents. Among the parents, we have the Williams. We have the Adams. We have the Parks. These are the people that were running. We have the king. He was already a king. He had nature around him. He had the grand, the grand, the father-in-law, William. He was a William Daniels, the, the angel Daniel, the minister Daniel is around him. He himself is an angel, Michael King. He's an angel and he's a king. So these are the names. If you watch what is coming on throughout his family line or how he was growing up, he loved his grandmother very dearly. Because I do suspect that when daddy is not there going up, preaching, being arrested many, many times, it was the grandmother's comfort, the grandmother's good cooking and storytelling that keep him comfortable and keep him comforted. 
So coming back to Atlanta, Georgia, to Ebenezer Baptist Church, he became the assistant minister to his own dad. So he has gone around through all that, through all the schooling that he needed, and back home. So his father was an earlier activist in that church. The church became the center where they met, organized, planned different ways how they go in to perform the marches that they did. And they decided to stay in nonviolent and disobedient ways of setting all those organizations and presenting themselves to the public. They always wanted to attract the, to the public what was going on. After he, after he came to Atlanta, there was a young lady who refused to give his seat to a white person to sit on. The girl was only 15 years old, and because of that, they let that go. The organization did not show up. But within about a month, Rosa Park, a young lady sat in the bus and decided not to give the seat up. And that led to the boycott of the bus system in that town for 385 days. And I asked myself, in the winter, how did they work? How did they go to work? What did they do? But they had the willpower and the willingness and the strength and the understanding that that was so necessary for that to be done and for them to seek freedom for those that are yet to be born. So they did that. And that after 385 days, the law was taken off the books that everybody could sit everywhere in those buses. It was a very dark time for so many people, for young people who may not understand. But we know, we can see it right now in the world that we are in. That division hasn't ended yet. If you look at the modern days where we are, elements of it is showing up day to day in our life. Your car tag may expire, you may end up being dead. You will be in classroom and you may end up being dead. You can be in the grocery store and you may not come back home with your groceries. Lord, make us more and more so we may serve you. There is too much division among ourselves. But we all came from one source. We came from the same mother. If we should take a DNA, we can all come up with something similar. When he returned home to his town, the governor of the town did not like him to come home. He says he brings chaos to the town. So they put the police on him everywhere he went. They jailed him so many times. 
He gave so many speeches. He made a trip to Memphis with his friends, with the group. And that trip didn't end well. That night, he didn't plan to go to that sermon. But when his friends got there, the place was full. So they called him to come out and do the preaching. And he did. He said he has gone up to the mountains. He's been to the mountain top. He's seen everything across. He was talking to us. That from that mountain top, he can see us with the potentiality to be able to send love to each other, to unite, to bring peace to the next person. We all want peace and love, and we can want it for the other person. He also made a trip to Washington, D.C. that he had a dream that someday I will be standing here and trying to talk about him. That someday that we we'll all be sitting in one room, that we're not going to leech dogs and guns on each other. The power of the gun allow people to have strength and eliminate the other person easily. The reason why we don't want that to go. But he let us know that the dream that he had, he believed that we can carry it on. Gandhi also believed that we have the potential to Christ ourselves. You can study from your home to your church, to your community and everywhere. You can be a prayer warrior in spirit and also send the power of peace to everywhere, to everyone. The world we are in right now, the voice of Martin Luther King echoes to us. It is so necessary. So many people dying left and right. Jesus said we can make greater things. We have made greater things, but the best greater things that we have made is guns and nuclear weapons. We advance ourselves in war machinery to kill each other, to have power over each other, to be able to control the other, to be able to oppress the other, to open to put chokehold on the other. But individually, we are made of love. When the war starts, we gather food and water and send. We deliver to the people. Why go for, to war? Why kill each other? Celebration of victory is a funeral. Martin Luther King, talk about that. The common act of love. He saw it within his dream. 
even those universities and schools and every everywhere is open yet we divide place the where we live session off for the black west side east side we have so many in the system that still does the does the same things but it's done it professionally but we you as you said with all your 12 hours within you, you have the power. You are, have the love. You are made of love. And you can make a change. It doesn't have to be big. It can be one thing. You meet a black person, say hello. We have to endure the sun, the scorching sun, for the earth to be able to come together so we all lived. He spoke for everyone. His voice bellowed through the wire over the horizon to the soul and mind of everyone. Everywhere in the world, he's been recognized. You are a Michael King. Look at your name. My name is Olivia. Olive oil, more love, much love. <laughs> Look at your name and see what you are supposed to do. We all have been given the power to do something. Nothing is too small. We are all God's people. If you put it within your mind when you meet a black person or somebody you don't know from another culture, just start off by saying, oh my God, God has created something different than me. And find out about that person. Come, let me take you to Africa. Their fruits are so sweet. Oranges, bananas, everything there. So good and so sweet. There is so much sunshine, so many rivers. We can swim and have a good time. Then I come to United States, I come to another culture. And oh my God, look at the people. Their skin is a little bit lighter. Their hair is down, they look different. But they are God's people. Every continent have different people. There's not one single person on earth. And if we say this idea of God is within us, that idea of God is in the other person. And we can recognize, we can stand on that and make us our daily prayer. It's not hard to do. You cannot say somebody is speaking a different language, the color is different, the, the race is different. We are all different. We are flowers of God. When you look out there in the fields, Flowers everywhere. We are the flowers of God. And that's why we are different. So today, Martin Luther King is telling us the most of the big stuff he did, we've heard it many, many times. I wanted to bring you the simple upbringing, the small origins to you to know the, the simple part about him the people that raised him up, the prayers and everything that gathered him together to stand and to be able to deliver to the world. From the voice of Martin Luther King, keep on dreaming because there's different people across the whole world travel to other continents and you see God has made a beautiful garden made of different people. My love to you all. our opportunity to support our spiritual family with our tithes and our offerings.
you to take them out, hold them in your hand, and bless them with our blessing offering. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. some announcements and some opportunities. Um, the Venus Rising Book Study Group begins this Wednesday, February 22nd at 10 a.m. Victoria over here will be leading a review of the book, The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. It starts at 10 a.m. in the morning. And besides the Venus Rising Group on Wednesdays, there is also the Sacred Feminine Group that meets every Wednesday at 10.30. And this is a group of women you can join any Wednesday to stimulating conversation and socializing. <clears throat> and Friday night, Greg Foster, Friday night, February 24th at 7 o'clock, join the fun and support our talented friends at the 26th Annual Talent Show. They had a rehearsal Friday night. We had a lot of really great acts. It's going to be a lot of fun. And if you're so inclined, we wouldn't mind a few munchies that we could have along the way, you know, while we're watching and enjoying. So feel free to bring any kind of little snacks you'd like to bring. Greg will be in the lobby after the service, and he'll be selling 50-50 raffle tickets for the drawing during the show, which you do not have to be present to win the drawing. It's buy lots and lots of tickets, because that means you can win lots and lots of money. <clears throat> the last couple of weeks, we've been telling you about our renewed efforts to fund a new driveway and parking lot to continue the upkeep of the, the building. You received a pledge form with a tear off at the bottom. If you'd like to challenge the universe to allow additional funds to flow through you for this purpose, fill out the bottom of it. Now, they're not in your bulletins this week, but there are some out in the lobby. Place it um, somewhere in your home to remind you of all the good that comes from God. And when we're designating the third Sunday of the month, oh, it doesn't have to be the third Sunday. Today's the third Sunday of the month. There's a little blue envelope in the back of the chairs if you'd like to add some extra money to the maintenance fund over and above your regular tithes and offerings. And there's also a little silver dot in there and a, um, a graph out in the lobby. You put the dot in the little vase on the graph and we can keep track of all the different donations that are coming in. <clears throat> and if you did not receive a pledge form like last week, they're, they're out in the lobby like I just mentioned. Our annual members and business meeting is Sunday, March 5th, which also means as required by our bar laws, it's time again to reaffirm your membership at Unity of Dayton. Um, there are forms in the lobby by the fireplace for members to sign and leave in the basket and if you've made the decision that you'd like to become a new member of the Unity of Dayton, there are some blue forms out in the lobby that you can fill out for that also. Coming up in March, Reverend Chase is planning a new group that involves NextGen, YOU, and Unity. 
Next gen are the group of people who have kind of moved out of YOU, but they're still young people and want to have a young group of adults that are involved in maybe a service project or social time. The first organizational meeting is going to be held on Sunday, March 19th from 1 until 3 o'clock, and it's for ages 11 to 35-ish. We'll kind of fall in there somewhere. <laughs> there's more information in the lobby. Um, there's a flyer in the lobby, and or you could talk to Reverend Chase. Looking ahead a little bit, on March 26th, I just found this out today, Greg Tamblin, you know, I, do you all know him from Unity? He's been around forever. He's a fabulous musician and comedian. He's going to be our guest speaker and have a concert on Sunday, March 26th. So this is something to look ahead, put on your calendar and plan for. And then looking ahead a little bit farther, on Saturday, June 10th, we'll be holding a holistic fair and craft show. This is going to be an outdoor event. It's going to be, I'm hoping, very big. Um, there's a lot of exciting details that are in the works right now, but I'm looking for people that are interested in helping me plan out those details. So, you know, if you'd like to jump in on any of this, please talk to me afterwards. I will be happy to get you involved. Um, I'm sure this is going to become a new annual fundraiser for the Unit Dayton. It's going to be just fabulous. So, that is the end of our opportunities today. We will say goodbye to anybody that's online. Remind them that you are the light of the world. Thank you for being with us.